Exactly two weeks from tonight, Canadians will decide who to invite or invite back to this place, Parliament Hill, the House of Commons. For 27 days, the six main party leaders have been traveling the country, making pitches and promises. Tonight, they will defend and deconstruct their ideas live. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau, Conservative leader Andrew Scheer, the NDP's Jagmeet Singh, Elizabeth May of the Green Party, Bloc Québécois leader Yves-Francois Blanchet, and Maxime Bernier of the People's Party. Their goal, to convince you to give their party your vote. The moderators are five of the country's most respected political journalists. The setting is one of Canada's most remarkable institutions, the Museum of History in Gatineau, Quebec. This is the debate. Here are your leaders. to the 2019 Leaders' Debate. I'm Lisa Laflamme from CTV News, and I am one of the moderators tonight. Our audience is made up mostly of undecided voters gathered here in the round, so they're right at the heart of this important night. One note, however, we have asked them to hold back their applause throughout the debate so we can keep things moving. And uh, just a couple more things to know before we get started. We're going to tackle five major themes tonight based on the questions Canadian voters want asked and debated. There were more than 8,000, so the themes tonight reflect those questions. The leaders will answer them based on an order selected in a random draw. We all want a meaningful debate tonight. Viewers want answers, so the leaders have all agreed to respect the time they are allowed tonight. And believe me, we will all make sure they do. Our first theme is leadership in Canada and the world. And our first question is from Reagan Lee, right here in the audience. Reagan. Uh, good evening, leaders. Sorry. <laughs> uh, many Canadians have felt the, um, many Canadians have felt the uh, implications of a divided world more so than 2015, from U.S. protectionism to Brexit to our growing tensions with China. As Prime Minister, how would you effectively defend both the interests and values of Canadians on the world stage? Thank you. Reagan, thank you for that. And Mr. Trudeau, you are first to respond tonight. You have 45 seconds. Thank you, Reagan, for being here tonight. And thank you all for joining us in this uh, important moment to talk about the future of our country and uh, compare and contrast the various plans that we have. Uh, we know we live in a very challenging time right now, from protectionism to fear-based politics to the transformative technological change people are facing. We need to make sure that Canadians are equipped and tooled to be able to succeed in an uncertain world, and that's why over the past four years, we've invested directly in Canadians, help people be optimistic about their future, have the tools to succeed, and the tools to see their kids succeed. We know the environment is a massive and pre pressing challenge, and building a stronger economy for the future means protecting the environment for the future as well. These are the things we're going to be talking about tonight. Mr. Trudeau, thank you for that. Mr. Vernier, your opportunity to respond. Thank you. We are the People's Party and we put Canada first. The other leaders on this stage are globalists. They spend your money to buy a seat at the UN Security Council and also they are giving your money to other countries to fight climate change in Asia and build roads in Africa. The UN is a dysfunctional organization and we must be able to fight for our country. Actually, we are the only party that will have a foreign policy that is based on our security and prosperity for our country. Mr. Bernier, thank you. Uh, the next opportunity for Mr. Singh to respond. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you very much, Regan, uh, for your question. It's, I know it's tough to ask questions in front of a big crowd, so thanks for doing that. And thanks to Canada for joining and taking part in this discussion. Um, 
To me, leadership is about who you're fighting for, the choices you make, and whether you're doing what's right for people. And whether it comes to international affairs, standing up to Trump, making sure we fight to build a better trade agreement that actually put Canadians first. For me, the question really comes down to, do you have the courage to stand up to the powerful and wealthy interests, the corporations that are having too much influence over Canada? And I've seen so far in Ottawa, whether it's liberal or conservative governments, they haven't had the courage to stand up and fight for people. We're different. We're in it for you. I don't work for the rich and powerful. I work for people. Mr. Singh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Shear, your opportunity to respond. Well, thank you very much. And of course, I will always stand up for Canada and Canadians' interests and promote free trade and defend our interests all around the world. But Justin Trudeau only pretends to stand up for Canada. You know, he's very good at pretending things. He can't even remember how many times he put blackface on. Because the fact of the matter is, he's always wearing a mask. He puts on a reconciliation mask and then fires the Attorney General, the first one of Indigenous background. He puts on a feminist mask and then fires two strong female MPs for not going along with his corruption. He puts on a middle-class mask and then raises taxes on middle-class Canadians. Mr. Trudeau, you are a phony and you are a fraud and you do not deserve to govern this country. There will be an opportunity later during the open debate to defend each other. Uh, first of all, Ms. May, if you'd like to answer uh, uh, Regan's question. I would actually like to answer Regan's question in contrast to what we just heard. But I want to start by acknowledging that we're on the traditional territory of the Algonquin peoples, and to them, Miigwech. Canada's role in the world is an enviable one. We have a historic reputation for being an honest broker, for being a country that stands up for multilateralism. We have a commitment as a nation to meet the sustainable development goals, which means our future as a world is built on ending poverty and encouraging the education of women and girls. That's a cornerstone. On top of that, we really need to renegotiate the World Trade Organization and make it an organization that promotes climate action. We need a World Trade and Climate Organization. We need to support the rule of law and human rights around the world because we are world leaders. Ms. May, thank you again. The question, how would you as Prime Minister protect Canadian interests and values on this changing world stage? Mr. Blanchet. Prime Minister is a bit unlikely. However, uh, first, good evening, everybody, and thank you for having me in, on behalf of the Bloc Québécois. Uh, having leadership or showing leadership sometimes means not making mistakes. And arresting the chief financial, financial officer of Weiwei might have been a big mistake, for which uh, farmers growing soya or those doing pork <clears throat> or beef might have paid the price. When you're facing a powerful foe like China, you don't try to show biceps if you have only tiny biceps. And this is something that has to be learned. And we would support somebody with real leadership, not making mistakes. Mr. Blanchet, thank you for that. Continuing with our theme, leadership in Canada and the world, it's now my opportunity to ask a question on behalf of Canadians, again, to a leader chosen by a random draw. So this question is for People's Party leader Maxime Bernier. Every other leader will then have the opportunity to debate him. But Mr. Bernier, uh, you like to tweet, so let me read some of your tweets back to you. Uh, you called diversity in Canada a cult and extreme multiculturalism. You've used the words ghetto and tribes to describe newcomers whom you say bring distrust and potential violence. On Greta Thunberg, the 16-year-old climate change activist, you've called her, quote, clearly mentally unstable. Are these the words of someone with the character and integrity to lead all Canadians and represent us on the world stage? First of all, thanks for the question. You must tell the truth to Canadians if you want to be the leader of this country. And what I'm saying about extreme multiculturalism, it is not the way to build this country. Yes, this country is a diverse country, and we must be proud of that. But we don't need a legislation like the Multiculturalism Act to tell us who we are. We are a diverse country and we are proud of that. What I'm saying, because it's in line with the immigration, I'm saying that we must have fewer immigrants in this country to be sure for these people to participate in our society. So it is a great country, but it's time to have a discussion about the immigration. 
We don't want our country to be like other countries in Europe where they have a huge difficulty to integrate their immigrants. And I'm a proud Canadian, and that's why I love this country, and I'm the only leader on this stage who wants to have a discussion about the level of immigration. So we're definitely going to have a lively debate tonight because now it is Mr. Singh's opportunity to debate Mr. Bernier on that very question, the temperament required for a good leader. I mean, Mr. Bernier, after hearing what was just said, you could have just said, hey, man, I messed up. Because those are pretty horrible tweets that you made. And really, for me, I mean, it should come as no surprise to you, I believe a leader is not someone who tries to divide people or to pit people against each other. A true leader is someone who tries to find bridges, bringing people together. That's what a leader does. And a leader works for the people who need help, not helping those at the very top, which we've seen with governments in Ottawa for far too long. They've been working to make life easier for the multi-billionaires. They get massive corporate tax cuts. Billions of dollars go towards them. We see offshore tax havens continue. This is not the way to build a country. You the way to build the future is to help Canadians the people that need help. You mean you got to stand up for Canadians the with your help. socialist policies? Not, it will, it will hurt everybody. It's not going to help anybody. It will hurt everybody. It's not the way to build wealth and growth in this country. You must believe in people. You must give back their money in their own pockets. What you're saying is not helpful. No. I'm just going to remind everyone this is a debate and the viewers do have a difficult time even hearing anything if you're talking over each other. So this is a portion where the leaders can debate Mr. Bernier and uh, it is now the opportunity of Mr. Scheer to debate Mr. Bernier on the question of leadership. Well, what Mr. Bernier fails to understand is that you can absolutely be proud of Canada's history. You can be proud of our identity. You can be proud of the things we've done and accomplished in the world while at the same time welcoming people from all around the world. And that is something that has made Canada strong. People come to Canada because of our freedom, our freedom to be absolutely who we want, Andrew, you're to be, right. you're right. To, to, and that's to believe why what I we want, want people to come to share our values, our but, Canadian values. But, you know, equality this, before the law, this, equality between men and women, you, this, the separation Mr. of Bernie, faith. You and have, the religion, you so have that's changed. important. We you have changed from someone who used to, to believe, like who used to believe in an immigration system. Mr. Bernier will let Mr. Yeah. Scheer ask you the question. You have gone from someone who used to believe in an immigration system that was fair, orderly, and compassionate, and now you are making your policy based no. on trying to get likes and retweets no. from the darkest parts Absolutely of Twitter. Not. We can be a country Absolutely that celebrates not. the contribution from that's people from all around the world. I want to it's celebrate important. what unites it's us. Important. I don't want to celebrate you can every do time that. our diversity. You can do that we without, need to celebrate our history. We need to celebrate, our need to celebrate who we are. Who have come and to we're this not country. doing that That is often. the difference between Mr. Bernier and myself on this issue. We believe, we believe in making Canada stronger by welcoming people, adding it to our country, and celebrating the things that have made us great as a nation. Now we're going to hear from Ms. May and Mr. Bernier on the same question. I understand the question, Lisa. It was also about the characteristics of leadership. So let me just say up front, I think leadership is service. I think the things that, that make a good prime minister is recognizing that we're public servants. We haven't won some kind of lotto. We don't get to lord it over everybody. We're here as your employee, and we want to work. And I had a little quibble with our introduction tonight saying, who will get invited back? It's not to be invited to go to Parliament. It's to sign up to work and to be of public service. I believe in service leadership. That said, I find the things that Maxime Bernier has said to be completely appalling. And, and he knows that I feel that way about the things he says in the House. We used to sit together. And generally, when Elizabeth, he said anything, Elizabeth, I'd have to put my head in my hands Elizabeth, because it was so horrific. I, I appreciate you, but you know, I don't share your policies. I, I don't that. share your socialist policies because, you know, we won't be able to create any wealth with your policies. You have the same kind of policies than socialist countries like Venezuela. That won't create any wealth. Well, you must admit that. No, you will the spend climate $60 billion. Is the single That's biggest your promises. economic opportunity in a generation more in or more. That's not responsible. And supporting immigration is what we need for this economy. And I'm, supporting I'm immigration. proud of the I fact support. the European Greens you know, are the only a, party that is pro-immigration. So are we. Thank you, Ms. May. Uh, now it is Mr. Blanchette's opportunity to to debate with Mr. Bernier. How many seconds will, we, will you leave me before you jump in? <laughs> uh, somebody invoking the truth should not be somebody denying climate change. And the use of socialism seems to come a little bit too easy. I don't deny in, climate change. Oh, you I made don't... 10 seconds. Uh, <laughs> immigration See, we were worried they immigration wouldn't pay attention. is not that much a matter of number. It's a matter of resources. We invest in it in order to have those persons welcome, as well in Canada as they are in Quebec, with our desire for them to share our language, 
to share some of our values. And if we do have enough resources invested in that, this is workable. And you do not do it by saying or sending the message that they are not welcome, no, either in Canada or in Quebec. Everybody is welcome in this country. And you know, 49% of our population believe that we must have fewer immigrants. They are not racist, they are not radical. So what you are saying, because I'm in line with the majority of our population, that I'm supposed to be a radical? Did anybody no, tell we you? have the right, we have the right in this Did country tell to you debate that ideas, and that's what I'm doing. immigrants also? We have the we right. We all are immigrants. Absolutely, and we are proud. We are proud Canadians. Okay, and the final debate on the subject goes to Mr. Trudeau, to Mr. Bernier. Again, the temperament required for a good leader. I think it's important to recognize that we're in a world right now where uh, these discussions, this polarization, this fear of the other has become easy currency for politicians who do want to strike up uncertainty in people's hearts and lift those anxieties and try to get people to vote against things. No. Unfortunately, Mr. Bernier on this stage uh, is playing that role of trying to, uh, to make people more fearful about uh, the migrations that are happening in the world and the opportunities around globalization and our ability to continue to redefine every single day what it is to be Canadian, what it means to be Canadian. And yes, uh, it will Mr. evolve. It will transform itself as we, as we take Trudeau. leadership, as we move forward. And you the values always want that are to Canadian celebrate. are you universal. You always want to celebrate our diversity. People around the world we must celebrate to. our history. You're we must celebrate who we are. And I'm proud Canadian like you. And, you know, we build this country together and we want this country to be like that in 25 years. We love this country and it's not because I want to have a discussion about immigration Mr. that I'm Bernier, radical. Only your role 6 on this stage tonight only seems to be to say publicly what Mr. Scheer thinks privately. No. Only 6% of, of Canadians want more immigration. Only 6%. So when you don't want to have a debate about that, you're not in line with the population. Let's just have an honest, an honest debate on that subject. Okay, and on that, we want to hear from another Canadian tonight. There are obviously so many layers to the issue of leadership. So this question is coming from Susan Fernando, who asks her question from Calgary. Again. Hi, I'm Susan Fernando in Calgary. More often than not, the provincial governments and federal government are on different wavelengths, no matter what the political party. Cooperation is key when it comes to issues of pensions, workers' rights, to education and health care. As Prime Minister, how would you demonstrate strong leadership when working with the provinces and territories? Okay, thank you, Susan Fernando from Calgary. Again, based on a random draw, this goes to Mr. Bernier first, uh, and then every other leader will have the chance to answer. Mr. Bernier. First of all, I will respect the Constitution. I will respect provinces, and that's very important. And I won't interfere in provincial jurisdiction. I won't interfere in health care because it is a provincial jurisdiction. And you know, we cannot, in Ottawa, solve the challenges that we're having for health care. And what we can do, we can transfer the money to the provinces, and what I will do, I will let provinces being able to deal with health care and with education. That's our constitution, we'll transfer the GST, so provinces will have the money to deal with that, and they will be able to answer to your challenges. Mr. Bernier, thank you. It's now Mr. Singh's opportunity to respond to Susan's question. Thank you. I want to thank Susan for the question. Um, really, she's touched on a lot of concerns that Canadians have. Things are getting harder than ever before, and she touched on a whole host of issues, pensions and, and health care. I, I want to single in on health care. Uh, to me, that's one of the biggest concerns I hear about when I meet with people across this country. And I think of the people that I meet, you know, the young boy that I met that has a chronic illness and has to pay for, his family has to pay for medication and injections and blood work. And he told me he's not worried about the illness, but he is worried about being a burden to his mom and dad. So that young person, Mr. Trudeau, is saying, you know, you're not worth universal pharmacare, that the big pharmacare companies or big pharmaceuticals are more important. I want to say to that young person, with the new democratic government, we will bring in universal pharmacare for all. You would use your health card, not your credit card for medication. Mr. Singh, thank you. Mr. Shear, it's your opportunity now. Well, conservatives have always recognized uh, the importance of working with provinces. We respect provincial jurisdiction, but we also understand that it will take federal leadership to get certain things done, like interprovincial free trade, something that Mr. Trudeau has failed to accomplish. But one thing I can promise voters across the country is that 
Premiers won't have to take a Conservative government to court to fight things like the carbon tax. And Mr. Trudeau has imposed his carbon tax on provinces that don't want to go along with his high-cost scheme. This carbon tax is increasing the cost of everyday essentials like gasoline, home heating and groceries. And it will only go up after the next election. He is refusing to tell Canadians how high his carbon tax will go if he's re-elected. The Conservative government under my leadership will scrap the carbon tax. Mr. Scheer, thank you. Ms. May. And for the question. It's very important. And as Greens, cooperation is in our DNA. None of the problems we solve are going we face are going to be solved if we keep arguing and fighting with each other, whether it's within Parliament in our different parties or between the federal government, the provinces, and the territories. The Greens are proposing a reinvigorated form of federalism, modeled after what has been done in Australia. We want a council of Canadian governments. So the federal government, provincial, territorial, Municipal and the local orders of government need a seat at the table. So too do Indigenous leadership, First Nations, Métis and Inuit around the same table, finding common ground on urgent issues like health care, on the climate emergency and working together in the public interest. Okay, Ms. May, thank you. Uh, Mr. Blanchet, your opportunity. Thank you. If I remember well, I've seen a study today uh, about from Mr. Eric Monsing. He's saying that this campaign is not about federal issues, but about provincial and Quebec issues. And this is not a surprise. If you want cooperation with provinces or Quebec, you need to respect the jurisdiction and something that you have to stop doing. And this is one of the demands of the government of Quebec in many, on many issues, is giving a hand to this, to our money being held hostage by the federal government and giving back to us with conditions. The money that has to be given to provinces in their own fields of jurisdiction should be given back without conditions. Mr. Blanchet, thank you. Mr. Trudeau, your opportunity now. In 10 years of Stephen Harper's government, he chose to stop meeting with premiers and first ministers' meetings. And we restarted that when we took office in 2015. We were able to strengthen the CPP for a generation. We were able to sign historic health accords with massive investments in, in home care and in mental health. We were able to invest in infrastructure like housing uh, and public transit across the country. And we continued to work with provinces on renegotiating a NAFTA uh, that it had uh, everyone playing on one team Canada. But yes, with certain provinces right now, we are fighting on the defining issue of our time because Jason Kenney and Doug Ford and other Conservative Premiers don't want to do anything on climate change. And we need a government in Ottawa that is going to fight them and fight for Canadians on climate change. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We will have the open debate coming up very shortly. Uh, we are going to switch gears now, though, and give a leader a chance to ask any other leader a question on any topic they choose. Again, the order of this was chosen by random draw. The first leader this time is NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. Mr. Singh, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. My question is to Mr. Trudeau. You know, you talk often about how Conservatives cut taxes for the wealthy and cut education and health care and other services. I agree with you and I've heard you say this often. So my question is, you criticize Mr. Harper on his climate targets, but you failed to achieve them. You criticize Mr. Harper on the fact that he cut health care funding you also cut them. You criticize Mr. Harper and Conservatives on giving billions to billionaires and corporations, but you gave 14 billion more. My question is this, why do you keep letting down the people that voted for you? First thing we did was cut taxes for the middle class and raise them for the wealthiest 1%. And on climate change, after 10 years of Stephen Harper doing nothing, uh, in just four years, we've reached three quarters of the way to our 2030 targets, which we will meet and surpass. But we know that's not enough. We're going to continue to do more, like planting two billion trees, uh, like moving forward uh, on giving money up front so people can retrofit their homes, on making Canada net zero uh, by 2050. We know how important it is to move forward. And right now, Mr. Scheer has promised that the first thing he would do is rip up the only real uh, plan to fight climate change that Canada has ever had. These are the things we're going to be moving forward on because Canadians expect us to. We lifted 900,000 people out of poverty with our investments in families, with the Canada Child Benefit and things that actually Mr. Sear and Mr. Singh, the NDP voted against. We will continue to invest in families because it's creating jobs, 
and helping people out of poverty because that's what Canadians expect and that's what we will continue to do. Now we, the leaders have an opportunity to have the open debate uh, on this question. It's for four minutes. Mr. Singh, you may begin. Thank you. I just wanted to say, I mean, we look at the track record of this government and in reality, Statistics Canada points out in 2017, the wealthiest actually paid less in tax and gain more in wealth. And when we look at one of the biggest problems that we're faced with as a country is offshore tax havens. Now, not only did your finance minister use offshore, offshore tax havens, but also the president That's of the Treasury Board. She also used offshore tax havens. So how can you tell Canadians we don't have the money to fund things like universal pharmacare when your top two cabinet ministers don't pay their fair share. I, Mr. Shear, you might remember that, Mr. Singh, you might remember that summer I'm very, uh, very argument different from over, Mr. Shear. over you I got know, it. I, you got it. I mean, you look so alike, it's really difficult for me. There's nothing in common here, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, we you, we uh, had a huge fight uh, with the wealthiest Canadians and the Conservatives yeah. when we closed tax loopholes that Mr. Shear is going to reopen and give tax breaks so let's, worth $50,000 let's, let's to the wealthiest Canadians. You, We're going to keep moving forward you in a way that call, invests in Canadians. You, Mr. Trudeau, will give words, Mr. Not Shear an opportunity you, to respond. You called small business owners tax cheats. You called entrepreneurs who have created jobs and opportunities in our society tax sheets, all the while protecting your trust fund and those of your billionaire mm -hmm. friends. What we are doing is lowering taxes for all Canadians. We've got and a universal tax cut uh, that no, will no. lower the first what bracket, doing, that will save $850 for the average right? income couple. We are going to bring in Mr. Bernier, tax credits for like sports. Yes, for sure. What the they line. are doing, they are spending, spending, and tax spending. Tax cuts are not Everybody spending. Here on tax cuts stage, are leaving Everybody here on the pockets stage of Canadians. are spending more money. And you not, you cannot create wealth when the government is spending money. You must have the right policies for the entrepreneur, actually. We want the private sector to be able to invest. The private sector will That's create wealth. That's why we're going to undo his no, tax you hikes. No, you won't balance the budget. You, nobody will balance the budget. It's, tax hikes. <laughs> it, I cannot Ms. May, you'd like the opportunity. Thank you. At the beginning of this segment, Mr. Singh pointed out that Mr. Trudeau had not changed the climate targets from those of Mr. Harper. It needs to be said very clearly, and I'm so disappointed pointed because I believed the Liberals in 2015 that they would go with science-based, evidence-based policies. But the Turned target that Mr. Trudeau is saying he will hit by 2030 is a target for losing the fight against climate change because it ignores the science, it ignores the IPCC advice. On this stage tonight, the Green Party is the only party with a plan, Mission Possible, you know that will actually a protect plan that will so that we the economy. A plan that will destroy the economy. You know that's Lisa. not true. It is no, true. That's not true. Yours is the real plan. Below Our plan 2005. is to stay in line, in line with science. It, Our plan is this. Which We've science did you find? Our plan is in line market. with the IPCC report, yes. and it's to keep a warming within 1.5 degrees, which you love to say, and it's very important, and I, I agree with you. I love to say it. You do, which is very important, and it's because a very important thing. Because it's about our children's he survival, here's which thing. I love to protect. To take on the climate uh, crisis that we're in, it's going to require the courage to fight big polluters. It's going to take the courage to stand up to the massive that. lobbyists that Mr. Trudeau has caved into, and the reason why we continue to pay subsidies to the fossil fuel sector. Ms. Ms. We Ms. would immediately Ms. Ms. end those subsidies Ms. May, if formed The government. experts are agreed that what a climate plan needs to do is to be ambitious and doable. And of the plans that are forward here on this stage, there is only one plan that the experts has qualified as both ambitious and doable, and that is the plan that we have begun to put in place. Don't over the Mr. Last word. Mr. Trudeau's plan Please. is failing. It is making everything more expensive for hardworking Canadians, and he has granted a massive exemption to the country's largest emitters. That's not true, Our plan Mr. takes the climate change fight global, recognizing that Canada can do more to fight climate change by exporting our clean technology and helping other more countries Lower their subsidies. And that concludes, is that is all the time we have for the open debate. That concludes this segment. You had an opportunity, you got to jump right in. So thank you all very much for the conclusion of that segment. Hello, I'm Althea Raj from HuffPost Canada, and the theme of this segment is polarization, human rights, and immigration. And we'll begin with my question to NDP leader Jagmeet Singh. Mr. Singh, I want to ask you about Bill 21. Your campaign is about courage, but you have not shown the courage to fight Quebec's discriminatory law. 
It bars individuals who, like yourself, wear religious symbols from some provincial employment. If you were prime minister, would you stand back and allow another province to discriminate against its citizens? Aren't you, and frankly, the other leaders on the stage, putting your own party's interests in Quebec ahead of your principles and the equality rights of all citizens? You have a minute to answer. Sure. Uh, it's probably pretty obvious to folks that I am obviously against Bill 21. Uh, it is something that hurts me, makes me feel sad. I think about all the times I grew up being told that I couldn't do things because of the way I looked. And I think about all the people in Canada that grow up being told they can't achieve more because of their identity or who they are. I think about the people in Quebec right now that are being told just because they wear a hijab that they can't be a teacher, or if they wear a yarmulke, they can't be a judge, and that's hurtful and it's wrong. And it probably comes as no surprise that I'm opposed to laws that divide people. And what I do every single day when I go to Quebec is I say, hey, I'm here, I'm someone that believes in fighting climate, the flight, fighting the climate crisis, I'm someone that believes in firmly and unequivocally the rights of women, the right of women to choose and to build more access to abortion services. I believe firmly in making sure we tackle the powerful corporations that are, that are influencing government and that are not allowing, uh, that are challenging our ability to ensure that we build services that lift up people. Thank I'm doing you. that every single day. Thank you. Mr. Shear. you and Mr. Singh may debate this question. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Mr. Singh, I just want to start off by uh, uh, congratulating you on the way that you have handled uh, so many issues around race and identity. Uh, as someone who has uh, been the victim of these types of, uh, of racist acts in the past, uh, I certainly believe you have uh, handled it with a lot of class, uh, especially as it relates to some of the scandals that have come out uh, during you. this campaign. Uh, I believe it's very important uh, for, uh, for people to understand that while uh, we will not intervene in this court case as a Conservative government, uh, we do recognize, and the Conservative Party always stands for freedom and equality and individual liberty Mr. and Schiff, we I, will make sure that this does I, I appreciate we will that. not pursue this type of bill at that. the federal level. I want to just touch on on one of the themes of this discussion is polarization and while Bill 21 is going to single out people because of the way they look another thing that's happening in our country right now is that people are being pit against each other and what's happening is people are who are can't find a home can't afford their bills can't get the medication or health care they need are being told that it's not the fault of powerful corporations and those who are not paying their fair share, but it's the fault of new Canadians. It's the fault of a 12-year-old 12 12 year refugee or an immigrant who's breaking his back working 12 hours a day. And that's why it's so important for us to tackle economic insecurity if we want to tackle the polarization. Thank you, Mr. Shear and Mr. Singh. Ms. May, you may debate Mr. Singh on this question. Yeah, I, I want to also echo uh, Andrew's comments because I think that Jagmeet has done, as we all have done through this uh, rather strange period of an election campaign, confronting issues of, of, of uh, privilege. And anyone with white skin has privilege. But when we look at Bill 21 in Quebec, I think it challenges all of us. Like the NDP, the Green Party opposes Bill 21. And then we're left with the question of what is the best way for a federal government to protect human rights within Quebec. Quebecers are fighting this out within Quebec. Quebec groups are going to court to say that Bill 21 discriminates. Ms. And Bill, as that goes forward, thank you very much. we are frankly looking at a situation where we don't want to do anything that hurts no, that debate within Quebec. I understand. You know, what I, what I want to also just touch on, while Bill 21 is of course polarizing, uh, on that point, I know you agree with me on this, that we've got to tackle those, uh, the powerful corporations that are not paying their fair share, and that's part of the reason why people aren't able to earn a good living and part of the reason why people can't find housing or they can't get the medication they need because those at the top aren't paying their fair it's share. It's not even about paying their fair share. We can't, build in, fair share. I think we can't even build in the they services. Have, okay, they thank have you very much. Proper Ms. May, thank you. Right Ms. May, you know. thank you. Mr. Blanchet, your turn to yes. debate Mr. Singh. With 70%. I'll give you more than 10 seconds. You're nice. <laughs> With 70% of the population of Quebec supporting the Bill 21 and 70% of the members of Parliament in Quebec supporting Bill 21, it's hardly a polarization issue in Quebec. That's the problem. The problem is that, and in English tonight, it will be quite clear, everybody here has problems with the very idea of I will say laicity because there's no exact translation for that word in English. Everybody has a problem with it, but say in best of cases that they would 
tolerate it. But Quebec does not need to be told what to do or what not to do about its own values, nor its language, but Mr. nor Blanchet, themselves as a nation. This, this is a bill that just says to people, because of the way they look, that they can't do a job. You and know that's, this that's is wrong. not true. And, and instead, instead Madame, of that, you know this is not true. And instead, your tweet that instead said of that, that I said instead that of that, Mr. Blanchet, the way what we should be doing was wrong. Mr. Mr. Blanchet, instead of what we should be doing is let's protect women's rights. Let's build Ressemble. up more protections for uh, a what woman's right to choose. What does means in let's, the context I used let's, it? Let's build up more protections for the LGBTQ community. Let's build up more protections in society to build a society Please, where there is a separation okay, of church and state. Okay, thank you, Mr. Blanchet. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Mr. Yeah, Trudeau and Mr. You. Singh can debate this question. Uh, Mr. Singh, you have spoken very eloquently about discrimination and fought against it all your life. Um, and that's why it's so surprising to have heard you say, like every other leader on the stage, that a federal government under you would not intervene in the question of Bill 21 uh, in uh, Quebec. Uh, it's a question where, uh, yes, it's awkward politically, because as Mr. Blanchet says, it is very popular. But I am the only one on the stage who has said, yes, a federal government might have to intervene on this, because a federal government needs to protect minority rights, needs to protect uh, language rights, needs to protect women's rights, uh, and needs to do that right across the country. You didn't say that you would possibly intervene. Trudeau, you didn't even I mean, leave the door open, we, and that's be, not leadership. Let's be honest for a second here. Every single day of my life is fighting a bill like Bill 21. So why every won't single you day fight of my it life if you form government? Is, every single day of my life is challenging people who think that you can't do things because of the way you look. Every single day of my life, I channel the frustrations of people who feel that as well, that many people across our country who are told that they can't achieve what they want because of how they look. So why I'm not running to become act prime minister on your of this convictions country, and, I'm going and to leave the and door people, open I want to, be to your challenging prime it? Okay, thank you, Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Singh, Mr. Bernier, your chance to go head to head with Mr. Singh. Yes about the Bill 21, we must respect the Constitution. And we won't interfere at the federal level. That's the decision from the, from the provincial government. And that's what we must do. But also, Mr. Singh, you said that you didn't want me to be here on the stage to have a discussion with you. So you're for diversity. But what about diversity of opinion? I have the right to have another opinion about immigration. And I don't know why you're not, you, you're a leader and you must be, try to have everybody on your side, but are you believing in Let me free speech? Question. Are you I believing in question. free speech only when people are saying things that you want to hear? You're asking the question, let me answer it. After a couple of minutes of this debate tonight, I think people can clearly see why I didn't think you should deserve a platform. The comments that you're making, the type of things you say, there's one thing to say that you disagree with somebody, that's fine. But when you incite hatred, when no, you I incite don't. Division, no, I don't. It's not you true. Say you cannot say that. You insult I'm just, a young girl I just want to have a debate. Ask about her mental stability. It shows a lack of judgment. You Absolutely. don't deserve a platform, and I'm happy to challenge you on that because your your ideas are hurtful to Canada. I will always work to build unity and bring people together. You need people. Okay, thank you very much. Merci, Monsieur Bernier. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Continuing with our theme of polarization, human rights, and immigration, we have people watching this debate right across the country, including a big crowd at the Student Union Building at the University of British Columbia. And our next question comes from Paige McDicken, who joins us from Vancouver. Please go ahead, Paige. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening. My name is Paige McDicken, and I'm here tonight at UBC, but I live in Coldstream, British Columbia. My question is along the lines of polarization, and to me, Canada feels more divided than ever before. If diversity is our strength, but division is weakness, how will your leadership seek to provide a unified vision for Canada, and how will you ensure that all voices across the political spectrum are heard and considered? Thank you. Mr. Singh, you may begin. You have 40 seconds. Sure. Uh, Paige, thank you so much for the question. Uh, I appreciate getting a chance to, to chat with you, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, when you talk about the divisions that we have in our, in our country, there are a lot of divisions, and, and they're growing. And I point to a, a lot of reasons for it. There's radicalization, there's, there's hateful discourse, there's uh, a climate which allows people to be emboldened. But the other reason why people are being exploited into hating one another is because they're worried about the future. There's a lot of people that can't get the basic things that they need, like housing, like the healthcare they need. 
And it's really the neglect of federal governments that have brought us to this position. And I think the way we tackle a lot of the polarization is making sure people get the basic things they need, like housing, health care. Thank you very much, Mr. And a good job. Mr. Shear, your turn. Well, it's very important that we understand why Canada is a country of such diversity. And it is because people come from all over the world to take refuge here, to build a better life here. It is because of our freedom. That is the common ground that everyone who has come here, no matter what generation, no matter from what part of the world, can agree on. And it's important that we remember that, promote that, and ensure that people who come here embrace that aspect that makes our country so great. But what is very dangerous is when you have a Prime Minister like Justin Trudeau, who who uses legitimate issues like racism and hateful, uh, uh, hateful language to demonize anyone who disagrees with him. Calling people un-Canadian for disagreeing with his failure on the border Thank you very does much, more Mr. to create Shearer, I'm sorry. Ms. May, your turn. Thanks, Paige, and hey to UBC. Thank you. I raise my hands to Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh territory. We need the kind of leadership that lifts people up, that doesn't make people feel as if politics is rather disgusting and they'd rather not look at it. We have to restore the idea of real democracy, where every citizen has agency and power to work together. Mission possible for climate action we call all hands on deck. We're going to need everybody. And to have the kind of democracy that really reflects everyone, we need fair voting. We need to get rid, rid of first past the post because it creates each political party as rival warring camps, even when the elections are over. We Thank need you to get to a healthy much, democracy. Ms. May. Mr. Blanchet. Yes. <clears throat> I believe that democracy grows on information. So, translating voter pour des gens qui vous ressemblent by vote for people who look like you is at best dishonest. And may I remind you that in 19 and 2011, the exact same phrase was said by Michael Ignatieff that in 2015, the exact same sentences was said by Thomas Mulcair. So people may Thank you very recognize much, themselves. Mr. Blanchet. I'm into sorry, a party. you're out of time. Mr. Trudeau. It's 40 seconds for each leader. Oh, it said 45 on my chart. I'm sorry. It has moved on to 40. Sorry. Everybody has the same time. It's no, Mr. No, Trudeau's time. Thank you. Thank you, Paige, for your question. Uh, it's great to see everyone at UBC, one of my alma maters. Uh, it's really important to recognize that, yes, we're in a time of polarization and uh, differences that get highlighted uh, by the kind of debate going on at this stage and in this campaign about how we're moving forward. But the reality is Canadians agree on most things. We want to raise our kids in a world that is getting better for them. We want to be able to pay for their, future, their futures. We want to be able to retire in, in comfort. We want to create opportunities for our neighbors as well. This is something that binds Canadians together right around the country. And the fact that there is a, a politics of fear and division that is continuing to dominate here uh, underlies uh, what we're actually doing Thank together as a country. Thank you very much, Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Bernier. Speaking about immigration, it is not polarization. Actually, Canada receives more, more immigrants per capita than any other Western countries, three times higher than the US. So we must have a discussion about that. It is the equivalent of one Nova Scotia every three years, like the population of Nova Scotia every three years here in Canada. So, you know, they're all for mass immigration. I'm for a sustainable immigration, and that's why we must have fewer immigrants, a maximum of 150,000 a year, with more economic immigrants for our country. Thank you very much, Mr. Bernier. We are moving on to a one-on-one -on -one format, followed by an open debate. We start with Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. You may pick any leader of your choice and ask any question <clears throat> of your choosing. <laughs> you have 30 seconds. Mr. Trudeau, you broke ethics laws twice. You interfered in an ongoing criminal court proceeding. You shut down parliamentary investigations into your corruption, and you fired the only two people in your caucus who were speaking out against what you were trying to do just for telling the truth. Tell me, when did you decide that the rules don't apply to you? 
Mr. Scheer, the role of a Prime Minister is to stand up for Canadians' jobs, to stand up for the public interest, and that's what I've done, and that's what I will continue to do every single day. The way I have uh, worked for Canadians is around investing in them, unlike the vision that you're putting forward of giving tax breaks that help people who are making $400,000 a year, uh, $400,000 a year, more than someone making $40,000 a year. You're offering a $50,000 tax break, which is more money than most Canadians earn, uh, to the wealthiest Canadians. Canadians with your plan. Of course, we don't entirely know your plan because you haven't released your costed platform yet, which I think is a disrespect to every Canadian Where's your watching costed tonight. Platform? Our costed platform Half came out two weeks ago. Mr. Costed. Here, you will have a chance to rebut. Our, 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 our platform came out weeks ago, and it is worked with the, we worked with the, the, uh, the uh, parliamentary budget officer, and we have a vision, but it is a different vision than, than yours, because we're choosing to invest in people. You're choosing, just like Doug Ford did, to hide your platform from Canadians and deliver cuts, and, uh, cuts to services and cuts uh, to taxes for the wealthiest. Mr. Scheer, That's not the way to grow the economy. But and you, anybody is free to join us. You know you're making things up again. Half of your platform isn't even costed. You are making announcements without any details and without any numbers. And that you aren't telling Canadians untrue, how Schiff. you're going to pay for you're it. You're the one who is but we hiding know your that platform taxes from will Canadians. go up under your government if you are re-elected. We lower you taxes talk about, for the middle we class started off talking and about raise them on the wealthiest 1% and, your and you voted you against them. You looked Canadians in the eye and you said that the allegations in the Globe and Mail were false. You said Jody Wilson-Raybould never were false. came to you. You said you never put pressure on her. We now know that those were all lies. You have failed to tell the truth Mr. on this corruption Scheer, scandal. The Responsibility of any prime minister is to stand up for jobs, and what and you're saying CEO, is you wouldn't CEO, have done it. The CEO of so, 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 Lavalin said he never Mr. threatened Mr. jobs I mean, or moving on on, the headquarters. You start, are making that up again. What we have here is Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Scheer arguing about who's worse for Canada. Really, we should be. <laughs> We got to start arguing. We said we got to start presenting who's going to be best for Canada. And when we think about what Canadians are going through, Mr. Shear, your your small tax cuts are not going to help a family that's struggling with the cost of childcare, which costs thousands of dollars a month. Your small tax cuts aren't going to help out a family that's struggling with the cost of medication that can cost hundreds of dollars a month. Canadians what are we're struggling to get by, and we're going to put more money in a their plan pocket. To make sure $850 we save families with money. universal well, tax cut. Let me finish cut. my point here. We're going to save families money by investing in Pharmacare for All, which is going to save families over $500 a month. Pharmacare. We're going to invest in child care. We're going to invest in child care. Let me finish my point here. We're going to invest in child care, which is going to save families thousands of dollars a month. And we're going to make sure that those families that earn less than $70,000 get dental care. That's going to save families at least $1,240 a month. This Our tax is where, dumping. Where will you, you, where will you find the money? Where will you yeah. find yeah. the money? This is a conservative spin. Where we're going to find the money is this. Yeah. We're going to ask in, the wealthiest Canadians, the wealthiest Canadians, those who have wealth of over $20 million, those who have fortunes of over $20 million, we're going to ask them to pay a little bit more. Yes, we think they should. That's only going to apply to a small number of families. You know what's fascinating about that proposal, because we have the same proposal in our budget. When the Parliamentary Budget Office reviews them, guess what they find is the single biggest uncertainty when we go for revenues from the wealthiest? They're worried that they'll hire lawyers and avoid paying that tax. If you go look at the Parliamentary Budget Office reviews, people said, oh, well, the Green Party is proposing to spend a lot of money. Yes, on pharmacare. Yes, on childcare. Abolishing tuition. And the weakness, they say, in our revenue sources is that wealthy Canadians will continue to hire lawyers and evade their taxes. I think that's shocking. And I think we need to say to people, this is the most beautiful, blessed country on I earth. And if you have wealth, you have obligation. You have okay, responsibility. If I, to, Pay if I may. your taxes. Yes, for sure. Uh, I, think, I seem to contribute. remember... Everyone's got to contribute their fair share. Makes sense. I seem to remember that Mr. She referred to the SNC-Lavalin scandal. And uh, I want to speak for 3,400 innocent people that did nothing wrong. When Mr. Trudeau tried to find a solution, he did it the wrong way and he admitted it. What you are doing, Mr. Scheer, is playing this old card. You're trading the idea that Quebec is corrupt. No, that Those 3,400 people have done nothing wrong. Now the value of the shares are going down. There the employees is, are leaving. The clients never, are leaving. Mr. Blanchet, with all due respect, we are losing it all, with all due respect, of you. there is never an excuse for a prime minister to interfere in an independent court yeah, but I was case. Talking we to do you, not by the want way. to live in a country where someone can abuse the power of their office to reward their friends and punish was, their and, enemies. And I those people have to pay the price that for that. The innocent the people Pay the I the price for that. I just want to add, I just want to add extremely Andrew, that I was the only <laughs> leader who actions. said no corporation is above the law. I was the only one who said that.
That's not true. I think I yeah. said that too, Max. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It may be the only thing on which we agree that no corporation is above the law, Good. and we need an inquiry into it's, what it's went on. It's a nice on beginning. The SFC what Island a wonderful ethics. show of unanimity on <laughs> this wonderful topic. And that wraps up this topic and this segment. Thank you very much. I'm Susan Delacourt from the Toronto Star. Welcome, leaders. Um, I'm moderator for the next theme, which will be Indigenous issues. Um, we're going to begin this segment, uh, which was also chosen by Random Draw, uh, with my question to Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. So here it is. Um, Mr. Scheer, you've said that a Conservative government would focus on practical things. Uh, in its relationship with Canada's Indigenous people. As you pursue your pr pr promised energy corridor, practically speaking, how will you consult, accommodate, and obtain consent from Indigenous peoples? Mm -hmm. And what will you do when your plans come into conflict with Indigenous rights and interests? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for the question. And as someone who has uh, 12 First Nations reserves uh, in his riding, uh, I understand the importance of balancing uh, uh, treaty rights and, uh, and also the ability for uh, uh, Indigenous Canadians to participate in the economy. And that really is the key. And what I have said is that a Conservative government will ensure that the proposal for the National Energy Corridor takes into account Indigenous concerns by ensuring that a cabinet minister is responsible specifically for Indigenous consultations and unlike the uh, uh, the court ruling that found that the current government uh, mishandled the consultations under the, uh, uh, the TMX uh, pipeline we will ensure that it is dynamic that it is more than just ticking a box and listening to concerns it's actually addressing those concerns but we have to remember that we have to get to a place in this country where big things can get built again and duty to consult means that concerns are heard and addressed but that also that we find a path to letting things get built in this country Ms. May, you have... Uh... Thank you. I'm, I am appalled by the fact that Mr. Scheer has forgotten that there was a duty to consult on the Harper government as well and that they also violated in the findings of the court identical to Trans Mountain on the case of Enbridge. It's the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples not, needs to come into force of law in this country. I know you oppose it because of the debate we had at McLean's. But the reality of it is Section does... 35 of the Constitution already requires consultation and it does not boil down to we will consult with Indigenous people until we get them to agree with us. No, but it also it means that about we have to find a way to get to a yes. Territorial rights so, that are inherent. So what does free, prior and informed consent mean for every single Indigenous community? It means what about the dozens free, and prior, dozens of Indigenous communities who you, want these projects to go Why are you prepared to set aside the decision of the Human Rights Tribunal to fight it in court, just as Mr. Trudeau is, when they actually found, as a matter of fact, that our government committed acts that were reckless and willful in the violation of the rights of there, Indigenous children. There are we dozens must of live Indigenous communities decision. who want these projects to go ahead because they know that but is the key to the prosperity on their reserve. They know that is the way rights. for them, for their young people to get jobs. Territorial and rights you are inherently and local. You define what you free, prior, and informed thank consent you. I don't want to argue with you. you. I'll let you talk. But Mr. Blanchet, it is now your turn. Yes, you, you say, Mr. Scheer, that you want to respect provinces and Quebec jurisdiction, jurisdiction, sorry. But when it comes to this pipeline of yours and this, you know, corridor energetic, which translation, translation, I'm sorry, in English is pipeline, you don't fear the idea of expropriating territories belonging to provinces and saying the constitution, yours, not mine, the constitution says that I have the right to go through provinces through Quebec without their approval. And that's, may I remind you that just Quebecers the and the Prime Minister of Quebec mm. said clearly that he does not want it. So uh, that's completely false. Uh, there's, what we're talking about here is addressing the environmental concerns and the Indigenous concerns up front, getting that out of the way so that there can be a geographic space where big projects can get built again, including Quebec sharing its hydroelectric uh, energy. Sharing now it belongs to Quebec and we're then it will about, not belong to We're talking to about the regulatory environment around it. And you know as well as I do that Quebecers purchase a huge 
percentage of their energy from the United States. I've made my choice. I believe Quebecers should get and you've said energy de chez nous, that buys not oil buying from energy, Saudi Arabia, not buying which oil is from the United false. States. I've made my choice, Mr. Blanchet. You have done, and Quebec will make his. Mr. Bernier, um, I remind you that this is about how will we respect Indigenous rights um, in... Oh, Mr. Trudeau, sorry. Thank you. We all remember 10 years of Stephen Harper, who did not respect Indigenous rights, did not in respect Indigenous peoples. And Mr. Scheer, you're putting forward exactly the same plan that didn't just fail Indigenous peoples, didn't just fail Indigenous communities uh, and their kids, but they also failed to get important energy projects built. We need to keep moving forward in a way that respects Indigenous peoples, respects that there's going to be a, a range of views, but is grounded in the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples that you have consistently blocked uh, through your party's actions. I, that is not respect for Indigenous peoples. Perry Belgard, the Grand Chief, of the, uh, the uh, uh, head of the Assembly of First Nations, has said that no government has done more so, for Indigenous peoples than this government, so and have, he's one of your constituents, have, Mr. Shear. That's right. He comes from a uh, little black in He'd my, love in to my talk to you. He, I, he he's asked got me my to phone number. Give you a phone call. I, I have nothing to learn from Mr. Trudeau, who fired the first Indigenous Attorney General for doing her job. She said that she would do politics differently, and you fired her when she did. And you want to talk about getting pipelines built? The, you've cancelled two pipelines, and the one you bought, you can't build. You've let tens of thousands of people in Alberta and Saskatchewan down, and you have failed, and you have failed to recognize that Indigenous communities so, okay. are hurt by I, this as I well. am accepting Sorry, the fact that I'm going to be attacked for uh, not you. building pipelines pipelines from some and for building pipelines we'll for others. Getting any and the balance we, are, we need to I take think we'll is be doing talking the right about this for the public. You're doing interest. nothing. Mr. Bernier. Mr. Scheer, you said that you're ready for building pipelines all across this country by the private sector. But at the same time, you said, you know, Quebecers are ready to buy oil and gas from Canada. I agree with that. I agree that Quebecers know that it's safer to transport oil and gas by pipelines than by trains. But at the same time, the Quebec government said that there's no social acceptability for a pipeline in Quebec. What will be your position on that? Do you think that you'll be able to use the Constitution? Because after consultation, if we don't have any agreement, we must be able to use the Constitution, Section 9210, to be able to build a pipeline. When you do that, the federal government will have the full authority, the full jurisdiction to approve pipelines. Pipeline. But what you're saying, you're for pipelines, but you don't have the courage to use the Constitution to be sure that we'll have pipelines in this country for the unity of our country and the prosperity of our country. That's just not the case at all. I've always said that the federal government must stand up for federal jurisdiction. We respect provincial jurisdiction. And when you've got the best idea, I am convinced that I can get support for this project because you Quebecers don't have the support in Quebec. Canadian you don't have the support energy. in BC. Quebecers know that it's better to take energy from Western Canada than the tanker after tanker of foreign oil coming up the St. Lawrence or oil and gas coming from Donald Trump's economy. I know Quebecers will support this project because it it will also allow them to share their hydroelectrical power with other provinces as well. And Mr. Singh. I want to talk about a recent decision. The Human Rights Tribunal of Canada found that the Harper government and Mr. Trudeau's government willfully and recklessly discriminated against Indigenous kids. These are kids that weren't getting equal funding. Yep. And then there's a landmark decision that said these kids should get equal funding and it was received as finally some justice for those kids. And then Mr. Trudeau He's now and his government are going to appeal that decision. He wanted to fight hard to keep SNC-Lavalin out of the courts, but he's going to drag Indigenous kids to court. That is wrong. How could someone do that? How could someone do that? This decision uh, will have massive, uh, huge ramifications for several uh, aspects of the way the federal government provides services to Indigenous Canadians. It also is uh, a very large, significant uh, settlement amount, and I believe that when you're dealing with these types of important public policy issues, uh, that it is legitimate to say that it should be reviewed by the, by, by, have a judicial review. I, I disagree, of course, but I want to talk about one other issue. You know, we're, we're talking about Indigenous, indig indigenous issues. You know, I went to Grassy Narrows again just recently. We've got a community impacted by mercury poisoning. And an Indigenous activist went to a private fundraiser where Mr. Trudeau mocked that Indigenous activist, saying thank you for your donation to someone he's phony. living with mercury poisoning. Because he's a fraud. What kind of prime minister does that? I uh, wish that, I had that, that answer. But one that doesn't deserve to be re-elected. That's time for this section of the debate. Um, the open debate is over, but we continue on our theme of Indigenous affairs.
We have a question from an audience member here in Gatineau, Natasha Beattie. Go ahead, Natasha. Good evening. Uh, as a member of Beausoleil First Nation, uh, my question is this. Uh, if elected, how would your parties work with provinces and territories on recognizing and affirming Indigenous rights, specifically noting the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action, and the calls for justice in the recent missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in Korea? Miigwech. The leaders will all have a chance to answer this question. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, starting with Mr. Shear. Well, thank you very much for the question. Of course, there's a lot there for just 40 seconds. Uh, there are many uh, areas in the, uh, in the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women report that Conservatives have been calling for for uh, quite a while, including combating human trafficking, something that is very important. Uh, also, we support uh, preserving Indigenous languages mm -hmm. by ensuring that the federal government uh, does what it can to prevent some of the, uh, the languages that are at risk of, uh, uh, of being lost uh, from be to, 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 to preserve them. Uh, when we're talking about the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, we need to remember that when you talk about free, prior, and informed consent, that leaves a great deal of uncertainty about what that means. And there are large numbers of Indigenous communities who want these energy projects to succeed, and we need certainty and clarity around that. All right. We, are, we will now go to Ms. May. Natasha Megwich. It's an extremely important question, and Greens across the country are united in this. We will honour the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. It must be brought into law in this country, and our existing web of laws and regulations, which were properly described by the inquiry on missing and murdered Indigenous women as constituting structural violence, must be reviewed and brought up to the standard of the United Nations Declaration. We must bring in the recommendations of the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, and the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It's not a short-term project. It is on us as settler, Canadian, settler Canadians to bring justice. Mr. Mr. Bonshaw. Yes, we also support the declaration of the United Nations on the rights of indigenous people. I do believe, and I've spent the most beautiful moments of this campaign with people from the First Nations. They are nations, as well as Canada is a nation and Quebec is a nation. And a nation does not put its, its culture, its language, its heritage in the hands of another nation. So what they ask for, and they have to ask because we are not, you know, we are no better than they are to represent themselves, is that all those reports and inquiries and declarations bring something real and respectful for them. Mr. Trudeau. Thank you, Natasha, for your question. We have moved forward on reconciliation in ways that no previous government has been able to, but I am the first to recognize there is much more to do. We lifted 87 long-term boil water advisories, and we are on track to lifting the 50 more, uh, but we're continuing to invest in communities. On the issue of child and family services, we recognize uh, the tribunal's ruling that says that children need to be compensated, and we will be compensating them. Uh, but we've also moved forward to end the tragedies by moving forward on legislation that keeps uh, kids in care in their communities with their language, with their culture. We also want to move forward with Grassy Narrows it, with the community on a treatment centre, and money is not the objection to investing in what they need in that treatment centre. Thank you, Ms. Bernier. No other leader is ready to build a new relationship with our First Nation. They all support the status quo. But the system is broken. We still have extreme poverty on reserve. We need a bold reform. And we are the only party that will try to implement property rights on reserve and also establish a new relationship based on self-reliance for these uh, communities. We need to build a new system, working with them, but that's not what they want because we cannot fix the system right now if we don't do a bold reform and we are ready for that. Mr. Singh. Thank you so much for your question. Um, really, it's, it's a matter of respect and dignity. All, all of the issues that you've raised come down to that basic question of respect and dignity. And one of the first things we would do, we wouldn't take indigenous kids to court and challenge a decision that says they were willfully and recklessly discriminated against. We wouldn't do that. We would immediately address issues of justice. That means 
implementing all the recommendations from the reports that are so powerful and have a guideline towards solving the problems. We would make sure there's clean drinking water. I don't accept any excuses why we can't in 2019. We would make sure that we implement clean housing, uh, good quality housing, and education and welfare services. We can do these things. Thank you. Uh, so now we have time uh, the, for another leader to leader debate on any topic. Uh, leading this one off will be Green Party leader Elizabeth May. Elizabeth May, you have, I believe, one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And my question is to Justin Trudeau. Picking up from this very fractured discussion on Indigenous issues, but let's face it, right now, Indigenous peoples, the Assembly of First Nations, are telling us their number one concern is the climate emergency. And we need to focus on real solutions. It's not good enough to have better rhetoric than Mr. Scheer. And with all respect to Mr. Singh, it's not about rhetoric. It's about a target that's grounded in science. And to do that, we okay. need 60% reductions by 2030. Not Mr. Singh's 38, not your 30. Will you, Mr. Trudeau, join with all of us in an Thank inner you. cabinet that gets rid of the partisanship and says, after this election, Mr. we move to Mr. protect Trudeau, our children's future together? Mr. Trudeau, your answer. We recognize that targets are important, and we're going to be surpassing the targets we inherited. Uh, but targets are not a plan. We have a real plan that has delivered over the past four years by ban uh, on our way to banning single-use plastics, uh, on putting a price on pollution right across the money, the country, in a way that returns money to Canadians, that actually makes, un unlike what Mr. Scheer is saying, most Canadians better off, 80% of Canadians better off with a price on pollution than they will be when he rips up our climate change if he were to form uh, government after this election. We will continue to do the things that need to be done and bring Canadians along along with it. Our plan is realistic and ambitious and doable. And that is what Canadians need because uh, the danger of not acting on the environment is, uh, is tremendous. The danger of not having a plan for our future, either the environment or the economy, is going to be borne by our kids. Ms. May, you may now begin open debate. Justin. There is uh, three minutes and 45 seconds. The science is clear, your target is a commitment to failure. That's why it's so doable and achievable, because it doesn't do what the IPCC says we must do. We must go off fossil fuels as quickly as possible. And you bought a pipeline. You can't be a climate leader and spend 10 to $13 billion more on a project that by itself blows through our carbon budget. Okay. Okay. We have you, to actually A slogan this. is not a plan, No, uh, I have, We have a plan. A Check slogan is not possible. a plan. It is an Justin, unrealizable honestly, plan. Canadians no, need that action that is going to actually make us but better, if, fight climate change, protect the environment, and build a stronger economy for our kids. Let, That's what we have with all done respect, more over the past four years than yes, any of government in the history no, of Canada. No, And there Paul is Martin much more, more to right. do. That there is, is much more no to do. No one remembers yeah, Paul Martin's plan in 2005. It was he better. Didn't but the deliver reality is, on that if plan. you have Over a, the past four years, fire, we delivered on it. If you have a fire in a four-story building, getting a one-story ladder doesn't do it. That is completely false. And just because you say something over and over and over again doesn't make it true. Oh, the, there is it would no be nice Canadian. for you to learn there that, is Mr. No Canadian. <laughs> there, is, there is no Canadian that believes that they're going to be better off by paying a carbon tax. You have given a massive exemption to the country's largest polluters, and your plan the is already failing. The economist, the expert, failing. the parliamentary budget it officer points out 80% of Canadians Based are better on your off he under had to trust our, the numbers you under gave our, him. Uh, Nobody incentive. believes your numbers, Justin, because you, you do not want to act on climate yeah. change, Mr. Mr. Scheer. You were doing nothing. You were reversing the only point we ever them. had. You promised the you balance Canadians this are year. facing they put it out a sheer field. Do we take that one at a time? Don't have to do these one at a time, Mr. Singh. Life is getting more expensive. Mr. Singh and then Mr. Vanny. I want to say this directly to Canadians. You do not need to choose between Mr. Delay and Mr. Deny. There is another option. There is another option out there. We are committed to a real plan that's going to take on the biggest polluters. It's going to take on the powerful interests because that's what we need to do. If we want to build a better future, what is your it's, going to ta it's going to mean taking on the powerful. And that means we're going to have to you cut our emissions by powerful, more than half. But you need to have a it plan absolutely that means, is rooted it in absolutely means we've got to take it on. Our kids' future. It's Nobody, it means we're going to have to no reduce our emissions by more than half. I just want to add a We've got to take on the powerful at the top. We're prepared to do that. People must know that that Mr. Scheer and Mr. 
Trudeau, you're the same on climate change. That's you want false. to impose a carbon tax on Canadians, and you want to impose more costly regulation. I think on that's the most offensive thing you, you said all night, you, Max. That we're the same on climate also, change. You want to impose over. also a, a big tax a on the things. big emitters. So you're the same on climate change, and plan, you won't be able to achieve your target. I think you and I have to find some common grounds when we get into that House of Commons. I don't think it will be on JNL Quebec and the fact that you're supporting a project that blows through more of the carbon budget against the will of many Quebecers and threatens the St. Lawrence River. This is not, this is not what I had in mind and I have, oh. <laughs> I've, I've provided answers to that. I think the when goal it, should be down to almost nothing. Yes. Not 13, not 16, not almost nothing. And what do you think about this idea of an equalization based on gas emissions. Those who are over the average emissions of Canada pay, and those who are under the average emissions get the money. The We're, incentive is for both parts. What we have to do is work together, and with all due respect, that was the question I asked Mr. Trudeau. Are any of you prepared to accept the notion of changing status quo yeah. decision making so we form yeah, an internal cabinet my only based on, the principle based of on that. finding my only the existential threat that I would not of work climate with change? That is good, but okay, I would certainly that's all the does not help. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have. That concludes this round. Thank you very much, and uh, on to the next one. Hello, I'm Donna Friesen from Global News, and I'm moderating this segment on affordability and income security. Before I begin, I just want to say you've all been very vigorous in your debate. Some of your comments have gone a little long, so we're going to have to trim a bit, a bit in terms of time, but we will make sure that we keep those trims fair and equal. So on this topic, Ms. May, uh, uh, I have a question to you. Canadians are carrying $2 trillion of household debt. That means the average Canadian owes about $1.79 for every dollar of income he or she earns per year after taxes. It's never been this high. We are borrowing to live, something my parents told me was a terrible idea. You have made a bold promise to balance the federal budget in five years. How do you do that without causing more financial pain for Canadians and putting people further into debt? And what's the single biggest thing in your policies, in your platform, that will reduce household debt? Thank you for the question, and I'm very pleased that we are the party at standing on stage today that has a full platform, has the budget numbers publicly accessible and approved as a budget that passes muster by Kevin Page and the Institute for Fiscal Studies and Democracy. The way to bring more public service, to bring more help to Canadians, child care, banning tuition, investing in post-secondary education, pharmacare, Income, dental programs for low-income Canadians, all things that make life more affordable, is not to have cuts, but to go after places where there is revenue, offshore money that's being hidden, a financial transaction tax, going after 1% tax on people who have more than $20 million in wealth, and a series of moves to increase the revenue coming into the Government of Canada. Now, that is all, of course, based on you know, the current economic situation, if we hit a recession, we would not slavishly or ideologically balance the books. But right now, we think we'll have a balanced budget in five years. Mr. Blanchett, your uh, opportunity to debate Ms. May on this topic. It is really a bad idea to borrow to live. It is a no better idea to cut too strongly into services to people that mainly need it. Right. What about the idea of cutting all subsidies to oil, as we propose to do, and uh, with, you know, bringing a law on the floor about that. How about this idea we have to green equalization, which brings money to the government? How about cutting into those foreign tax shelters, including the two new ones created by Mr. Trudeau? And what about taxing and pursuing taxes from those giants on the web that steal the money from our advertising companies. D'accord. Don, in our platform, we call for taxes on the e-commerce companies, the virtuals, the Amazons and the Googles and the Facebook that mine billions of dollars out of this country and pay virtually no tax. We agree with you. We have to cut all fossil fuel subsidies. As a matter of fact, that was a promise made by Mr. Harper in 2009, by Mr. Mr. Trudeau, Trudeau in 2015, but I they've remember. increased because we're subsidizing LNG, which I'd like to hear you answer where you are on JNL Quebec. We need to get rid of fossil fuels, and right now, 
We're, we're, we're you know still was, giving public funds. I was the minister, I was the the minister responsible for the bank. I'm going to move you on. I'm sorry. Mr. Trudeau, your chance <clears throat> to debate. Ms. May on household debt. Uh, we made a very different decision than Stephen Harper had in the previous 10 years when we decided to invest in Canadians instead. And that decision to invest in the middle class and people working hard to join it lifted 900,000 people out of poverty, including 300,000 kids. We gave uh, more support for students going to school. We made more supports for seniors. And what that has done is actually grown our economy. More than a million new jobs created, most of them full time over the past four years, at the same time as we have reduced poverty, uh, exceeding any targets that we had even set forward. We've done that in a way that is responsible. The uh, international credit rating agencies have given us a triple A rating. Let's yes, give the please. floor to Ms. May. Yeah, what I, the concern I have about all these debates, by the way, and I'm sure a number of other leaders on stage share it, we don't have any section on health costs or health care in the course of two debates. So I want to turn this to the affordability issue and how much more affordable life will be for Canadians with full, universal, single-payer pharmacare. It's in our platform. It's partially in yours. It's it's in Mr. Singh's. We've actually we taken to concrete healthcare. actions towards that. Well, lowering drug prices, lowering, yeah. uh, dr but, lowering, but lowering prices for Are you prepared to accept Eric Hoskins' recommendation uh, for universal single-payer health I'm afraid, I'm afraid time's up for you, Mr. Bernier. Yeah, your chance to debate the Ms. May on household debt. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, look at your platform, Elizabeth, and you know, you will spend $60 billion dollars Spending won't create any wealth. You cannot spend your way to prosperity. We need to have more private sector investment. Yeah. And at the end, you know, you know that our national credit card is full. We still have deficit. And Mr. Trudeau just had $70 billion on our debt, and you'll have another $60 but billion you know on our debt. Famous... It is not responsible. Our children will have to pay for that. But you have, you have your famous private sector having got massive tax cuts when you were in Mr. Harper's cabinet, based on being told these were the job creators and it would be great when they got tax cuts. They have not invested in the economy. They're sitting on piles of cash. Mark Carney calls it the dead money. We need to get that money and do public sector infrastructure investments like do, a national grid that you know will bring renewable agree? energy from one part of the country to the other. No pipelines, by the way, but we need an electricity grid that serves the needs of every province and every Canadian. Yeah, what I like from you, Elizabeth, you, you don't want any subsidies to the oil and gas no, industry. I and I don't believe in corporate subsidies also in corporate welfare. So we can agree on that. All right, let's move on to Mr. Singh, your opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Ms. May. I actually really appreciate that you wanted to shift the discussion towards health care. I think it's one of the biggest concerns that families have. When we look at Canadians across this country, they can't get the medication they need, they can't get the dental care they need, and they're struggling. I met a woman in my office in Burnaby who was covering up her mouth because she was embarrassed that she had lost her teeth because she couldn't get the care she needed. And that, to me, is heartbreaking in a country as wealthy as ours. And I know, Ms. May, you're prepared to do this, but the problem is, is Mr. Trudeau does not have the courage to take on the insurance and the pharmaceutical lobbyists that don't want this to happen. But I'm going to make it happen. If you vote New Democrats, we're going to make sure we make these things happen because we don't work for the powerful and wealthy. We don't meet with pharmaceutical companies and then listen to them. We work for you. We work for Canadians. We're going to deliver on these things. We have to have, a, I hope you'll agree with me, that we need to renegotiate a new health accord. It's been left alone for too long. We need to get back at the table. The constituents in my riding, I just did eight <laughs> debates with the local candidates in my riding. By the way, all of you guys can be proud, except for you, Mr. Blanchet. All of you can be proud of the candidates you have running locally because I've been in eight debates with them in the last week. But one thing we heard from every constituent in every town hall meeting is we are suffering from a lack of family doctors. We need an investment in our health care. The wheels are falling off the bus, and, and Mr. we Trudeau need has to continued, invest. Mr. Trudeau right. has continued the same cuts brought in by Mr. the Mr. Chair, your opportunity. Well, the question was about affordability. And, and household the debt. Entire, and household debt. And the entire theme of our platform is leaving more money in the pockets of Canadians so that they can get ahead. It's time for Canadians to have a break. Our universal tax cut will mean $850 in the pocket of a hardworking average income Canadian. We're going to bring back the children's fitness tax credit to make raising children more affordable. We're going to bring back the green public transit tax credit to make taking the bus or the train more affordable as well. We're going to help fight climate change by bringing in the 
the green home renovation tax credit, which will put money in the pockets of Canadians and help lower emissions. And we're going to pay it for that. If I, I'll, emissions. Just, I'll just it'll finish. Ride, it'll cost if them to we, go through the roof. The, the way we're going to pay for those is by cutting corporate welfare and reducing Canada's foreign aid budget by 25%. So we're going to stop sending money to the relatively well-off countries. We're Relative. going to bring that money back home so that Canadians can get ahead. Mr. Scheer, that may be the worst idea in your whole non-platform, is the cutting of foreign aid. I wear this little pin. This is the I Sustainable Development Canadians Goals of the United Nations, to which this country is committed. Ending poverty within the next decade, within Canada and globally, is actually possible, but not if we ever had the misfortune of having your short-term, misguided, I believe short we should take that money and bring it back home so that Canadians greedy and can selfish ahead. policies. It's not greedy okay. to put money in the pockets of Canadians, Ms. May. We're I going fundamentally disagree with you. We're going to stop you there. It destabilizes the world what you're proposing. Italy, We're going to stop Iran, you there so that we can Mexico. hear from another Canadian, please. Uh, the, on the theme of affordability, one of the many places Canadians are watching tonight is in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. Here's the scene at the Copper House restaurant. And earlier, we heard a question on affordability from Scott Marsden. Hi, my name is Scott Marsden, Yellowknife. My question is, what is your government going to do about the growing crisis of income inequality and affordability in Canada? Ms. May, first to you. I've been in that restaurant. Hello, Yellowknife. Good to see you again. Look, uh, we must act for income equality. We need to look at the fact that over the years, the gap between the various wealthy, wealthiest Canadians and the average Canadian is continuing to expand. We're calling for a tax commission. We haven't had a proper tax commission since the 1960s to examine our tax code, to see if it's still progressive, to find out if all these corporate boutique tax cuts that have piled up over one after the other after successive governments is taking money away from those Canadians who need it most and allowing those who really have massive income to continue, as many Auditor Generals have found, to be treated by Canadian Revenue Agency as if they have special status and don't have to pay their taxes. Ms. May, thank you. Mr. Blanchet. First, uh, I must say that if saying untrue things at the end of time is your way to do things, collaboration might be done already. However, about the issue, if federal government was to respect jurisdiction of provinces, it would take less time it would cost less money, and provinces and Quebec could do what they have to do about health care, bring the money that is owed to Quebec and provinces. This is what has to be done. Lodging the money, the money should be given to provinces and Quebec because it is mostly, if not only, their jurisdiction. That helps people. Mr. Trudeau, to you, the question is about income inequality and what you would do. We recognize that we need to help people more directly. That's why the first thing we did was lower taxes for the middle class and raise them on the wealthiest 1%. We're moving again forward with a tax break for uh, low and middle income Canadians and nothing for the wealthiest, unlike Mr. Shear's universal tax credit. We're also moving forward by increasing the Canada Child Benefit, which has lifted hundreds of thousands of families out of poverty uh, by 15% for kids under one. We're increasing the old age security for seniors over 75. Uh, we're making sure that students have an easier time paying back their student debts uh, by not having to pay back until they're making $35,000 a year. We're investing in Canadians. Mr. Trudeau, thank you. Mr. Bernier, your turn. First of all, I think it is important to be able to have a discussion about what is important for Canadians. We are the only party that will balance the budget in two years. All the other parties on this stage will spend and spend and spend. That is not a solution. The credit card is full, but we will do that without cutting services. We will cut corporate welfare, all the corporate welfare, $5 billion that we can save there. All these political parties, the only promise that they do, to, they do everything to get your vote. I promise you to do nothing except balancing the budget, and after that, lower your taxes. That's the only responsible policy. Mr. Bernier, thanks. Mr. Singh, to you. Um, I want to thank Scott for the question. Income inequality is massive. There's also massive wealth inequality. And these are not just esoteric academic discussions. When those at the very top do not pay their fair share, when 87 families in Canada have the combined wealth of three provinces 
it hurts families. It means we don't have the funds to invest in healthcare. It means we don't have the money to invest in things like dental care. So while Mr. Trudeau likes to talk a nice game, and I admit he says nice words, but what he's done is he's given $14 billion to the richest corporations to buy private jets and limousines in the last fall economic statement. We would instead invest in people, ask the super wealthy to pay their fair share, and invest in programs to relieve the costs on families. Mr. Singh, thank you. Mr. Shear, your turn on income inequality. Well, actually, uh, Mr. Trudeau has his facts wrong again. Uh, our universal tax cut drastically is, is much better for middle-income Canadians than his proposal. And he thinks that someone earning $47,000 a year is somehow too rich for a tax cut. I disagree. We also recognize that you don't need to tear some people down to lift others up. Justin Trudeau's attack on small businesses, threatening them, making it harder for them to grow and expand and offer the types of opportunities that lead to the jobs that have much higher income earnings, was precisely part of the problem over the last four years, all the while protecting people who have inherited trust funds. We will take a different approach. We will ensure that our entrepreneurs have the support they need to grow and succeed. Mr. Scheer, thank you. We're going to move on now. I have a question for the Bloc Québécois leader, Yves-Francois Blachette, after uh, which each one of the leaders will have a chance to debate him one-on-one. -on -one. Mr. Blachette, Quebec is one of five provinces to receive federal equalization payments in 2019. It received $13.1 billion, the highest amount of any province. That's a benefit of being part of a federal system where wealth is shared. You've referred to the money as an assistance check. Premier Legault has said he wants to wean Quebec off equalization payments. Do you agree with that? And if so, what would you, how would that make life more affordable for Canadians? Thank you for the question. First, the very system called equalization is based on some flawed uh, reasonings, flawed ways to analyze things. And this is why we propose something else that would progressively replace it. Oil provinces are very wealthy and have developed those resources with money from all across Canada, including Quebec. And today, they are using it as a threat over Quebec, which citizens do not want to be a passage for this oil through their territory because they rely on clean energy and believe this is the only responsible way to do things. We propose a kind of equalization that would be based without any constitution change on how provinces perform in fighting climate change. Those who are over the average pay, those who are under the average receive the money, giving a strong uh, encouragement for everybody to reduce GHG right. emissions. Mr. Blanchet, thank you. Uh, let's go. Uh, the leaders will all have a chance to debate this one on one, one minute each, beginning with you, Mr. Trudeau. Thank you, Donna. Um, equalization exists so that every Canadian across the country, regardless of the province they're born into or live in, uh, accesses the same quality of services right across the country. It is uh, not a perfect system, but it is a system that ensures uh, as much as we can equality of opportunity across Canada. Uh, we've continued to engage with provinces across the country on updating the equalization formula in ways that are fair, uh, and it is something that continues to bind this country Quebec together. Unfortunately, you, uh, you uh, Mr. Mr. Blanchet, as a sovereigntist, are always looking for opportunities uh, to create fights between Quebec and and the okay. rest of Canada now, to advance your separatist now, we agenda. have paid for the development of oil in Western Canada. Canadians want. And you make us pay again with this idea of buying a pipeline over there. And tell me something. What can a Canadian do that a Quebecer cannot do? Why would you, would we need anything I think by definition, a Quebecer can, can do anything do a Canadian can do because no a Quebecer is no a Canadian no and will no remain a Canadian under my are. watch, we Mr. Can Blanchet. Do thing. Gentlemen, thank you. Mr. Bernier, you now have the opportunity to debate Mr. Blanchet. Yes, yeah, speaking about the equalization, I'm the only leader who's ready to look at the equalization formula for being sure the, that the formula will be less generous and fair for every province. Let me explain. It is not fair to tax people out west and also in Quebec because Quebecers 
you know, are proud and they want to live in a richer province. So what we must do, we must give the right incentive to provinces to develop their own natural resources. That's so important to have a quest to have a discussion about the equalization. And they don't want to have that discussion. You, let's be less generous and fair for every province. Share this why? Idea? Why? Because it is important when you have people What's in a, in a, when you have people in Alberta, twenty yeah, seconds. Twenty percent of people in Alberta seconds. wants to have the discussion and let's Ten have seconds. the discussion. Okay, <laughs> Quebecers receive less money from equalization per capita than anybody else who receives it in Canada. Do you mind about stopping those lines? All right, <laughs> Mr. Blanchet, Mr. Singh, your opportunity to debate. Yes, um, I was thinking about ways we can make life more affordable. And this is where I think we can do a lot if we work together. This is one of the things I believe that we can, we can build a better Canada if we tackle some of the challenges that people are facing. One of the things that we hear about a lot in Quebec is the cost of health care and that it's not there for them when they need it. If we work together, the Universal Pharmacare Plan is one where we use the buying power of all Canadians. It's still delivered provincially, but we can actually buy medication for lower costs and Actually, it will help it out is. Quebec it is and it'll delivered. Help out people. It is delivered provincially uh, and uh, dental care is, would be, if we wanted to finance it, a provincial jurisdiction. You have good ideas, but your ideas always interfere and infringe into jurisdictions which are those but of I don't provinces want to and I want Quebec. To work together. So if you want to do that, we gotta please work do it for Canada. Take our part of the money as the Constitution allows. We can do that. And send we can work together. Quebec. The other thing we need to do is when we want to tackle the problems is housing. Housing is something that's concerning a lot of people. Federal money used to be invested in building, in partnership with provinces to build housing. We want to do that again. Mr. Scheer, thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Singh, pardon me. me. Mr. Scheer, over to you. I don't know how people are getting me mixed up. I do not allow that. <laughs> I wore a bright orange turban on purpose today. Mr. What does it take? I'm, I'm slightly <laughs> taller than you, Mr. Singh. I must be. And stop rubbing Mr. that Scheer, in. Mr. Chair, please uh, continue the debate. It's important for Quebecers to realize that on so many issues, Monsieur Blanchet agrees with Justin Trudeau. He will support Justin Trudeau's higher taxes. He will support massive deficits that will continue to put pressure on Canadian taxpayers, meaning more and more of their dollar goes to pay the interest on I the debt. I just had like to raise more and money Sorry, without if I raising this, taxes. Blanchette, so you didn't know, listen or you didn't understand. We know that Monsieur Blanchet's priority is working with the Parti Québécois on sovereignty. So we know that if uh, votes for Bloc Québécois MPs mean that Justin Trudeau stays Prime Minister. Avec le Bloc, le plus ça change, le plus ça reste le même. And you know we what? Know Do you remember that, that all that those, Blanchette, all those, all that Monsieur you say Blanchette, you did for Quebecers was done when Harper was in a minority to government, purchase his oil and gas from the United States. By you Québécois. prefer sending consumers dollars to the United States, States to support that economy. I, pres I pres you have prefer a strange Canadian energy. Of you've Canadian talked members. over each other and you're both out of time. Thank you, Mr. Scheer. Ms. May, it's your turn. Forgive me, Donna, but Yellowknife, Ryle, and I see you. Congratulations for being elected MLA. I'm just so excited. Now, turning to equalization payments, we need equalization in Canada because we're a country, we're a family. We need to think like a family. Your proposal, Mr. Blanchet, would be to put an extra burden on those parts of Canada, like Alberta, that have the toughest challenge to meet the climate crisis. We're concerned as Greens that we work together, that we not alienate Alberta. I, that I, I noticed that you had a strong sensibility for Alberta since your previous positions on oil were quite nice to them. No, they're not however, nice. They're, however, we're shutting family, down the oil sands by 2030. Family, they don't find it nice. In a family, That's why they deserve fairness. In a family, sometimes one does not agree with others and he doesn't have to be forced to do what others we say. We are facing a climate emergency and anyone who understands the science, and I hope you do, and this is, we this all is a world, with Greta. This is a world issue and only countries do international affairs, provinces We don't. have to pull our weight as all provinces right. and as nations and we do it together. We have to move along. Thank you for that. Uh, we will end this segment with another open debate. Yves-Francois Blachette, it is your turn to ask any other leader a question on the topic of your choice. Mm. I wonder a long time. Mr. Scheer, you said in English a few months ago that you were strongly against the very idea of Bill 21 about laicity of the state in Quebec. Then you said in French in Quebec that you would do nothing against that law. But your very close collaborator, Mr. Alain Rayes, said the day before yesterday that you would protect 
the Bill 21. It said that in French, I must admit. You, you, would, you were the only one that would protect the Bill can you, 21. Can you get to the question, please? Please, how will you do that? It's very, uh, this, the answer to this question is very simple, Monsieur Blanchet, and you know that I've always been very clear on this issue. We will not intervene uh, in the court case that is currently before the courts. Uh, the elected officials of Quebec have taken this decision, and now it is before no, the courts. Mr. And I the courts said that and you the courts would protect, will protect the law, not tolerate that the law, protect exactly the law. What, what will you do to protect this English, law? and in French. It's very important that a federal government respects and protects individual liberties and individual human rights. We will not pursue this court of action at a federal Your level. Your definition but of Mr. Scheer has the floor. In the law. It's quite simple. I just answered that question, Mr. Blanchet. Mr. Mr. Blanchet, Mr. Scheer has the floor. Français, Monsieur Blanchet. It's the same thing in French. We will not intervene in this That's court case. The court case will, the, 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 will, will decide this. Does not see the same thing as you do. It's exactly the same position, Monsieur Blanchet. You're no. trying to create a, a, division, a confusion where it doesn't, where it doesn't exist. The law does not mean that you would protect it. I would protect it. You would so not. We you are open, so we are going to have an open debate. That was Mr. Scheer's time to answer. I apologize. I will leave you some We will now have the open Open debate, Mr. Blanchet. You may begin. Okay. Can I start speaking now? Because you spoke during Please, my answer. Please go ahead. <laughs> We're still nice people. Uh, the, the issue on this has been exactly the same from the beginning. And Mr. Blanchet, I think you're trying to create confusion where there doesn't exist confusion. Uh, I, I have always been very clear, both in English and in French, the, the, the answers have always been the same. This is something that at the federal level we will not pursue. Uh, the Conservative Party has always stood for individual liberty, for fundamental human rights. It was a Conservative Prime Minister that brought forward the Bill of Rights, the last Prime Minister from Saskatchewan, Except, uh, John Diefenbaker. Sheer, and we you won't will defend a woman's right to choose. You, you've that dismissed LGBT, uh, LGBT protections. False. Uh, you, you haven't apologized for your words millions, against LGBT millions, Canadians uh, millions years of ago. Canadians, will you, will you millions recognize and Canadians, apologize for that? Millions of Canadians have a different position on this issue. And like millions of Canadians, I am personally pro-life. And it is okay in this country to have a difference of opinion, something yes, you do not recognize. But Canadians and it is beneath, to know, it is beneath Canadians the Canadian Prime Minister to, know to that demonize their Prime Minister, people for their Canadians views. need the to know that their Prime Minister is One at a time, on please. Issue, one at a time, please. The laws me, and access on this issue have not changed for 30 years under Liberal Prime Ministers, under Conservative Prime Ministers. Mr. Let me have the change need to know that their Prime Minister will be there to defend them. And you have been just answered that question. You have been not unequivocal on defending this is rights. You're, typical, you're signing the nomination papers you like of people you want to talk who want to take away How about your uh, misogynist, uh, racist, racist candidate you right now, in Nova Mr. Scotia? Okay. Uh, let me have can we... Can we uh, no, nobody can, can, nobody can hear what you're saying anymore. You will be signing the nomination papers of people who have pledged to take away rights from the women. I know. You're having a mini debate over here. Can we bring uh, in? A man uh, has Mr. no Singh. position in a discussion on a woman's right to choose. How about Let's be very clear on that. In a debate. Let's be very clear. It's been really interesting for most of this campaign to hear a lot of men arguing about what a woman's rights should be. But having all of you, except for Max, participated in the TVA debate where you were perfectly happy to keep women out uh, off the stage. I'm the only woman leader of a party. You participated in a debate which did not let our little girls see that there's a chance for a woman in this country to be prime minister, to run as the leader of a party. We must be clear as all leaders, and you are not clear, Andrew, that we will never allow a single inch of retreat from the hard earned rights of women in this country, not one inch. This is, but, but this it is a typical... me that you're open to working with Mr. Scheer. Yeah. Sure, and your, your own MPs could come up with a law against abortion, and you said that you will tolerate it. This no, is I, don't, no, I, this I, is I said we don't allow anyone to tactic. run in our party it's right who doesn't hold a pro-choice position. When they position. are in danger of we losing don't... an election, they Sorry. bring forward this these This clearly needs more words. time. I'm afraid we don't have more time. Issue, unlike all the rest of you. Ms. May, thank you, you very much. We're going to have to move on. Thank you. That concludes our segment.
everyone. I'm Rosemary Barton from CBC News. Our next theme, we've already talked about it a little bit, but now we will for real, the environment and energy. And we will start with a question from another Canadian. We're going to go to a gathering of people watching the debate, this time at the Halifax Central Library. And we will talk to Britton Bancroft of Minto, New Brunswick, is there and has this question. Over to you. Hi, my name is Britt Bancroft and I'm from Minto, New Brunswick. And I believe we live in an age of climate crisis. And this is the last election we have before a point of no return is reached. Furthermore, I believe that for many large corporations that pollute, the current system of fines and penalties associated with that polluting is just the cost of doing business. What concrete plans does each leader have to address big business polluting? Thank you, Britt. And the first answer goes to That is Blanchet. very interesting. What is considered as the most progressive system to fight climate change so far is this agreement between California and Quebec, this uh, uh, trade exchange system that forces businesses to lower their emission through time. And it works very well. And I was, I had the privilege of completing the negotiation of such a system and signing it. And it should be used elsewhere. Simple taxes that return into the pockets of people without any change and incentive are not the solution. Doing nothing, hoping that, you know, some spirit will come and solve the problem is no solution either. That's it, Mr. Blanchet. Mr. Trudeau, over to you. Okay. Uh, as Mr. Blanchet said, Quebec and other provinces like BC have moved forward with putting a price on pollution. We've ensured that that price is put in right across the country because it is a mechanism that will both lower emissions and ensure that Canadians can afford this transition. The choice tonight uh, is very clear between two parties uh, that have very different views on climate change. Mr. Scheer wants to rip up the only serious plan on climate change Canada has ever had the day after the election and we will continue to do more. We recognize we need to do more to fight climate change. That's why we're going to be surpassing our targets. That's why we're going to get to net zero by 2050. Mr. Bernier. At the People's Party, we are the only real environmentalist party. Why? First of all, we want to do things that are possible. We want to do things that are possible to protect our health, our hair, our environment, our water. All the other leaders claim to save the world and to save the climate. They cannot. Canada represents only 1.6% of the green gas emission. And they claim also to be able to achieve the Paris Accord target. They cannot. They have to impose a carbon tax of $300 a ton to do that, and they won't do it. They don't do it. They're hypocrites. We won't uh, have a tax on carbon. Time's up. We, yeah. Time's up. Mr. Singh. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Britt, for your question. Uh, we are faced with a climate crisis. There's no question about it. We've got massive forest fires, which make it hard to breathe in some parts of Canada in the West. We've got Massive flooding, which means people are losing their homes in the East. This is a serious crisis. Now, while Mr. Trudeau has said a lot of nice things, let's look at what he's done. He said that he's for the environment, but then he continues to exempt the biggest polluters from his price on pollution. He says he wants to fight the climate crisis. And what does he do? He continues to subsidize oil and gas massively. He says he's a climate leader. What does he do? He buys a pipeline. There's a big gap between what Mr. Trudeau says and okay. what he does. And Mr. Scheer, over to you next, sir. I find myself agreeing with you again, Mr. Singh. Uh, on the environment, like so many issues, Justin Trudeau says one thing and then does something completely different. He's talking about hitting 2050 targets. He can't even meet 2030 targets. He talks about ripping up a real plan. His plan has been proven to fail. He has given, he has given a massive exemption to the country's largest polluters. They, and they were able to negotiate themselves up to a 90% exemption from his carbon tax. Meanwhile, hard-working commuters, moms and dads taking their kids to school or driving to work, they have to pay the full brunt of that. Our plan is a real plan that takes the climate change fight global, recognizing that we could shut everything That's it, down Mr. here Mr. I'm dropping the hammer. We're coming to the end of the show. Ms. May. Britt, thank you for the question. You, unlike everyone else on this stage, clearly understand 
that we're up against a real climate emergency. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has given us hard timelines, challenging targets. If we're going to do what's required, it isn't easy. We don't grade on a curve and say because a plan is less <coughs> ambitious, it's therefore more doable. If it fails to meet the goal of holding global average temperature to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius, we fail to give our kids a livable world. Greta Thunberg is right. The house is on fire. Grown-ups then stand up and say, kids, get to safety. We've got this. We'll take care That's of this it, for May. you. My turn now to ask a question, and this one goes to Mr. Trudeau. And the question is this, Mr. Trudeau. Last fall, the United Nations International Panel on Climate Change stressed the need to act quickly to limit further global warming. A report from Environment Canada says this country is warming twice as fast as the global average. You say you are committed to combating climate change, but your government still proceeded with the purchase and approval of a new pipeline to the West Coast. Given the timeline and given what is at stake, should Canada not be moving more quickly away from further development of the oil and gas sector? And to that end, should the Trans Mountain expansion be Canada's last pipeline? We absolutely have to move faster. We absolutely have to do more. And that's why we put forward a, an ambitious plan to continue that is reasonable, that is, that is doable, and uh, is going to make sure that we get to uh, not just surpass our 2030 targets, but go beyond it. We're banning single-use plastics. Uh, we're putting a price on pollution right across the country. And we are fighting those conservative premiers who do not want uh, to do their part to fight climate change. We recognize that transition to clean energy uh, will not happen overnight. While we do, we should have less oil by rail, uh, and uh, we need to get to new markets so we can invest all the, all the resources, uh, all the money coming in from uh, this pipeline into that green energy transition, into fighting climate change. I know that's uh, a, a big a piece of the way we move forward, how we invest in the new economy in that transition. That's what we've done. The choice tonight is do we pick a government that doesn't believe in climate change or in fighting it, or okay. do we continue on the track we are and okay. be even Got more to end it. I noticed you didn't answer the last part of that question, whether we were on our last pipeline. Mr. Bernier, your turn to debate Mr. Trudeau for one minute. Mr. Trudeau, I think we agree that we don't agree on climate change. I believe that there's no climate emergency. You believe the opposite. But you won't be able to achieve the Paris Accord target. I'm not saying that. That's the UN who said that. You need to impose a carbon tax of $300 a ton, and you don't do that. In Elizabeth four May, years, Mr. We, I just Bernier, went, let we me got finish. Elizabeth, Mr. Right Mr. There. Trudeau, let Mr. Bernier finish. Elizabeth, yes. she's right, and you're right. She has a radical plan to fight climate change, it will destroy the economy. But what about you? Okay. You won't In be able to... Mr. Years, Bernie, Mr. We made it three-quarters of the way to reaching those 2030 targets. And over the next 11 years, including by planting 2 billion trees, we're going to get there. But Mr. She what, Mr. Bernier, what you don't understand, what Mr. Scheer doesn't understand, is you cannot build a plan for the future of our economy if you are not building a plan that protects the environment and fights climate change. That's where both of you are completely wrong. Okay. Mr. Scheer, it's not your turn. Mr. Singh, your time to debate Mr. Trudeau. Mr. Trudeau, I, I know that you say a lot of nice things, and you've been saying a lot of great things on this stage today. But the problem is, is that you said a lot of these things in 2015, and you made it sound like you are going to make climate a big priority. But the reality is, you did all these things. You bought a pipeline, you continued to subsidize oil and gas, and you continued to exempt the biggest polluters. So what's it going to take now for Canadians to believe that you're actually going to fall through in your promises? What's it going to take for you to follow through on these commitments? Because your words are not a good enough Mr. anymore. Singh, Mr. We Trudeau. have reached three quarters of the way to achieving our 2030 targets, and we're going to surpass them. And Mr. Singh, Canadians might be surprised to discover that your plan is to build a massive refinery in Alberta. And the only way to do that is with federal subsidies, because there's no private business case for it. Your plan to build a refinery in Alberta is worse for the it's environment than building that was uh, not a our pipeline plan. I don't know. to the, to the West Coast. Mr. Singh, Mr. Singh? Our, not our, our plan. I don't know where you got that from. It's not our plan. Uh, we would immediately end fossil fuel subsidies. We'd immediately invest in clean energy. That's it. We would immediately do it. That's what's time. Needed. Mr. Scheer, it's your turn to debate Mr. Trudeau. When, Same question. When Justin Trudeau took office, there were three major pipeline projects ready to go. Under his watch, all of them have failed. He had to take $4.5 billion of Canadian tax money to put the Trans Mountain Pipeline on life support. And he did that by sending $4.5 billion of taxpayers' money to another country, to the United States, to be invested in the oil and gas sector there instead of here in Canada. His answer 
for his rationale for having two campaign planes was that he bought carbon offsets, which is just a thing that privileged people can do no. to keep okay. polluting. Mr. Trudeau's chance to respond. Mr. Trudeau, Mr. Trudeau's chance to respond. Mr. Trudeau, 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 Mr.
Maybe you'll answer it tomorrow in the press conference, but you haven't answered it tonight. That is just not true. You haven't answered a question your entire time as Prime Minister. I've sat across I, you. You I, never answer a I question. Answered more I answered more questions your uh, question in, the, in, in, very, in, very in uh, the House of Commons. I am rolling Mr. Trudeau, back. Mr. Mr. Shear, finish, I please. Mr. Trudeau. I am rolling back your tax hikes on entrepreneurs, on small businesses. You called them tax sheets. There are These are the people in our community. For the wealthy They are saving up money to open up a second location. Investing in people's training. Gentlemen, no one can understand anything. Mr. Blanchet wants in. Mr. Shear, Mr. Blanchet. You're both experts and multimillionaires. However, I have a suggestion for you. How about this idea, which has been asked unanimously by Assemblée Nationale du Québec, of a single tax refund? That would save about $400 million to our combined states. Is that not a great way to save money, make things simpler for people, companies, you're businesses, and even government? So you're talking about the single income tax return for Quebecers? Yes. I am the only federal party leader that can deliver on that, Monsieur Blanchet. That is you something might find that I am in a position to. where you need I me to do that. I am committed to simplifying the lives of Quebecers by ensuring that they only have to fill out one single income. I, I want to clear my Mr. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh, yes, go ahead. Mr. You know, Mr. Shu, you talk a lot about tax cuts, but this is the reality. The thing is, is that Canadians can look across this country and see what the impacts of a conservative tax cut means. Translation. Cuts to education, cuts to health care, vicious cuts to the most vulnerable people in society. That's what you do. The thing is, Mr. Trudeau, you sound a lot different. You sound a lot better, but you've done much of the same. You've given billions of dollars of to the wealthiest. Mr. Singh, it's and not your nothing. Top line as your top out of cabinet ministers is not nothing. Mr. Trudeau. tax havens. Can Mr. Shear, you can respond, then Mr. Bernier. So under Trudeau's policy, Canadians are working harder and harder, but they're barely getting by or falling behind. Our policy will leave more money in their pockets, and we're going to it's do not. that, Mr. Singh, by protecting services like health care and education. We're going to get the money to pay for it by cutting corporate welfare and reducing Canada's foreign aid budget by 25 percent. That Ford is going to pay thing, for do our it. tax cuts for all Canadians to leave more money in their pockets so that they can get ahead. Mr. Mr. Bernier. Not going to work. Mr. Shear and Mr. Trudeau, it's all the same. It's all boutique tax credit. They won't cut tax for every Canadian. We have a platform with only two tax rates that would be fair for everybody. So everybody will save. The cost of our tax reform will be $35 billion. But we will do that <clears throat> only after balancing the budget. We'll use our surplus. It's the only responsible way Ms. to give more money. I got a question. The, Ms. No, you had your chance. Party. Ms. May wants in. Ms. With May. With two weeks left in this election campaign, Canadians can know one thing. At this point, Mr. Shear, with all due respect, you're not going to be prime minister. The question is going to be <laughs> on a seat count I'll, if I'll we put have a on Mr. That, Ms. Trudeau May. in a minority or Mr. Trudeau in a majority. Voting for Green MPs is your very best guarantee, Canada, that you don't get the government Mr. you at least Ms. want. Mr. Shear can respond to that, and then we'll wrap it up. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong on that, Ms. Well, May. You just watch on October I'll, 21st. I'll lay your bets right now. Mr. Bernier said something that is completely untrue. Under Justin Trudeau, we will see endless deficits, meaning more and more of Canadian tax dollars goes to pay the interest on that debt. We will okay. balance the budget while still preserving Ti time more is services. Up. And it's Maxine Bernier's chance to lead this part of the debate. You can ask one question to any other leader. 30 seconds, please. Yes. <laughs> Andrew, you are, you are calling yourself a conservative, but you don't want to balance the budget in two years. You will have $70 billion on our debt. You support the cartel in meal, dairy, and poultry, knowing that a Canadian family is paying more than $400 a year for that. Andrew, are you a real conservative? No, I think you are uh, liberals. Why are you pretending to be something that you are not? If you Mr. want to talk Mr. about Mr. Pre pretending to be something that you're not, I'm not sure which Maxime Bernier I'm debating tonight. Was it the Maxime Bernier from the 1990s who was a separatist? Was it the Maxime Bernier who was minister responsible for handing out corporate welfare? Was it the Ma Maxime Bernier who defended supply management when I'm, it suited him? The I'm fact the of the matter Maxime is, sorry, it's my, it's my time to, to respond to that question. The fact of the matter is there's a clear contrast in this election. Justin Trudeau's endless deficits and tax hikes to pay for it, or a conservative plan that will leave more money in your pocket. We will lower taxes for all Canadians. We will bring back popular tax credits like the kids, sports and fitness tax credit. We will boost the RESP. We will raise the age credit for seniors and we will bring in a green home renovation tax credit. That all the while cutting corporate welfare and Canada's foreign aid budget to bring that money back home so that Canadians can get ahead. Nine seconds. Thank well, let's do open debate. Off you go. You're starting yeah. that too. Yeah. Uh <laughs>
Thank you very much. I'm the Maxime Bernier who is there for Canadians. And I'm the Maxime Bernier who are, are, does not uh, care about having real debates on real issues that are important for You're Canadians. Maxime you don't Bernier want to have debates on immigration. Ever you, don't have, in your life. you don't want to have debates to help every Canadian and abolishing that cartel in supply management. You don't want to be able to cut foreign aid. You don't want to cut foreign it's aid. Let's let Mr. Shear respond, yeah, please. It would be important yes. to Mr. balance Shear, the budget, Mr. and we Singh. can Mr. do Shear. that. Well, that's precisely not the case. We've said that I've said that we will cut Canada's foreign aid budget by 25% to pay for the tax cuts that we you can are save going to five bring million dollars there and balancing the budget. Tax I want to just put in you know, what this election is all about. This election is all about who's going to fight for you, who's going to stand up for you. And we've seen with Mr. Trudeau, he says nice words, but he gave six billion dollars in corporate loan write-offs last year, 14 billion to the richest corporations. He keeps tax havens open, he keeps loopholes open. He hasn't closed them in four years. We're in it for people. We're not in it for the rich. We're going to deliver universal pharmacare for all. We're going to deliver dental care programs. We're going to invest in housing. And we're going to fight the climate crisis like we mean to win it. That's what you get with New Democrats. I ask people to support Mr. New Democrats Mr. Trudeau to can hold respond. to account this Mr. government, Trudeau can to respond. form government Sir. in the next election. We have invested in Canadians. We made a very different choice than Stephen Harper did, very different choice than Andrew Scheer is proposing. We lifted 900,000 people out of poverty. We lifted seniors out of poverty. We're putting more money in the pockets of suits students and we're seeing over a million jobs created most of them full-time over the past year but there is so over the past four years but there is so much more to do and that is what we have to stay focused on because the fight against climate change the fight for the future Ms. of our economy yeah. matters and that's the Ms. choice May Canadians wants in, need then to Monsieur make. Blanchet. Yes, we have ahead. completely mischaracterized our response to the climate emergency as something that somehow doesn't help the economy you have the biggest global economic opportunity in the history of humankind in moving off fossil fuels as quickly as possible I but agree. then you're keeping fossil fuels going because your <clears throat> target is exactly half of what's required. If this election is anything, it's about trust and ethics, and we are in a climate emergency. It's we need grown ups in the room to take responsibility. Mr. Blanchet. Mr. Singh said that he wants to fight for Canadians, and that's a good point. Who do we want to fight for? I want to fight for Quebecers and Quebecers only. If we agree with the Canadian government, then let it be. If we don't agree, we're going to fight. And this is what Bloc Québécois has always done. And I can't wait to have these people say in French what they said in English today, Jeudi. Ils vont le faire, Monsieur Scheer. The fact of the matter is, under Justin Trudeau, life will continue to get more expensive. He will continue to raise taxes. His carbon tax will go up. He's afraid to tell you how much it will go up by. Under the Conservative plan, we'll balance the budget, protect core services, Let's let Mr. and Mr. lower Trudeau, taxes for Mr. Trudeau, Canadians. five seconds to respond. Uh, yeah. Our price on pollution helps Canadians more uh, than, uh, than removing it does. Okay. Climate emergency. That, that's it. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this segment and to the end of this debate. We want to thank all of you, of course, for taking the time, our questioners tonight, and all of you for watching live in person and on your various screens. Just a reminder, as Monsieur Blanchet hinted at, that French language debate is later on this week, Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. On behalf of all my wonderful moderators and everyone here, have a good night. This is a special edition of The National. You are looking at the Canadian Museum of History in Gatineau, Quebec. That is where just moments ago, fireworks. All six main candidates vying to be prime minister facing each other in the English language debate. A key moment to reach millions of Canadians in one televised clash of ideas, policies, and personalities. Now, if any voters were waiting to tune into the campaign, this was a critical moment. Yeah, and tonight, the National has extensive coverage. Rosie was one of the moderators. She's on her way back from the debate stage to join us. Standing by right now, Vashi Kapoz is ready with analysis. Salima Shibji fact-checks the leaders. That's hard. David Cochran tracks the spin from the party war rooms. And for the highlights of the debate itself, we have Katie Simpson. Yeah, and so that's where we begin. Uh, Katie in our parliamentary bureau tonight. So, Katie, it didn't seem to take long before candidates went on the attack. What did Canadians see here tonight?
Andrew, conservative leader Andrew Scheer landed the first blow, aggressively attacking liberal leader Justin Trudeau, which led to a series of testy exchanges between the frontliners. It's been the theme of this campaign so far, and it dominated the debate stage. I can't even remember how many times he put blackface on, because the fact of the matter is he's always wearing a mask. Mr. Trudeau, you are a phony and you are a fraud and you do not deserve to govern this country. We don't entirely know your plan because you haven't released your costed platform yet, which I think is a disrespect to every Canadian Where's your watching tonight. Where's our, 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 our platform came out weeks ago and it is...